in this video today i'm going to be showing on step by step on how you can test for a reducing agent like glucose and also zinc ion we are going to be running test observation and inference according to yx standard how yx we want you to draw the table for them and how it will fetch you math so sit back Pay attention to every details, to every instructions I'm going to pass in across in this video. So if you are new in this channel, kindly subscribe and do well to turn your notification button so that if you miss any video on this channel, you'll be able to get it on time. So let's go into the class. Now when you are running your test, you are expected to use test tube and some other reagent so this is just simple way of showing you how your chemistry lab should look like now i have said it earlier that we are running a simple test on sugar like glucose and glucose happens to be a reducing agent now i'm not saying in any way that this question you are seeing on the screen is exact why chemistry question you are going to meet but you we can model this you can see something related you can see something similar to this so you can use this note to read and prepare for your chemistry practical sample c plus distilled water in a test tube now what you are going to see there is if you are testing for a reducing sugar like glucose sample c will dissolve completely to form a colorless solution note that it dissolves completely not partially dissolves if you are dissolving sample C, if C is not a mixture of salt, if C just C, not a mixture of salt, okay, because when you are having a mixture of salt, that's when you can be having a, some, maybe one, one will dissolve, one will not dissolve. But if it is just sample C and the question is not saying that it is a mixture of salt, then you can easily go ahead and say C dissolves completely in water to form a colorless solution. And then in our inference, we are going to have sample C is a soluble salt. Or you can say sample C dissolves in what? In water. Let me just say in that inference, sample C is what is a soluble salt. Because we have said that sample C dissolves in water. So don't use the word soluble uh, dissolves in your inference again. So that that inference will score. Now, column 2. Now, note that column 2. Not in that column 2, I said aqueous solution of c so when you are doing your own you can say c aqueous plus either blue litmus paper or red litmus paper the what you are going to get there the, your observation must be solution c has no effect on litmus paper i mean solution c sorry i'm sorry solution c has no effect on the red litmus paper or blue litmus paper because if the question asks you to test with red litmus paper and also test with blue litmus paper so your observation will be it has no effect and sincerely if you really do the, the, the test if you put a red litmus paper inside any solution of glucose it will not give you and there will not be any change in reaction whether red or blue so your conclusion is solution c is what is neutral to litmus paper now we may now have to divide our c aqueous into portions maybe into two portions now we may be asked to divide our c aqueous into two portions so to the first portion we are adding k2cl2 o7 and you will agree with me that k2cl2 o7 is an oxidizing agent so we can only test for the presence of reducing agent using oxidizing agent so k2 cr2o7 is what is an oxidizing agent and the color of k2 cr2 which is potassium heptar oxodichromate 6 the color is what is orange so when there is a color change from orange to green automatically that shows the presence of a reducing agent so in, your, in our observation once you see k2 cr2o7 in your uh, test that you are to test with K2Cl2O7, just note that in your inference, you are definitely testing for a reducing agent. And what will be your observation? 
the orange color of the acidified K2Cr2O7 solution turns to what? To green. The initial color of K2Cr2O7 is what is orange. So if the color now changes from that orange to green, it's an indication of a reducing agent. And in your inference, you can say a reducing agent is present. Or you can write CHO, which is uh, the functional group of a reducing agent. CHO or O. OH group is what is present. You can choose either of the two. Please do not write the two simultaneously. If you do, it's possible you, you might lose mark for that column. Now, to, to another portion, to another portion of CA curves, know that I have said that you are not going to present sample C again. Is that you say solution of C or C A chaos? You can pick one of the two plus Fairlin solution. Immediately you add Fairlin solution, the, the color change to blue. Then you are going to eat. If you eat, then you are going to observe a big red on what on eating, and that shows the presence of a reducing sugar as well. So we we'll use these two tests to te to identify or to confirm a reducing agent a reducing agent now a reducing agent like uh, glucose and the functional group of that reducing agent is CHO so you can either say CHO is CHO group is present for your inference or you write a reducing agent is what is present so this is how we can actually test for the presence of a reducing agent like glucose now, quantitative analysis on a sample suspected to contain zinc ions. On a sample con suspected to contain zinc ions. Now, it depends on the nature of, you know, the zinc, the zinc compound we are talking about. But let's assume that this compound is insoluble in water. The compound, the sample D, which happens to be our uh, zinc, which happens to contain zinc ions. Let's say it, it doesn't dissolve in water. Because... Uh, like the first column here now we are to eat we are to eat sample D so when we eat sample D our observation is see anytime you are eating compound of sample D I mean compound that contains zinc ion compound that contains zinc ion what you are going to observe is that uh, it will turn yellow on eating when you are eating it the color will be yellow and why cooling on cooling the tallest the color the yellow color turns to white remember i said on eating from white it will turns to yellow any compound any compound of zinc that you eat like that from what from white it will turn to yellow on eating and on cooling it will turn back to the white from white it will turn to yellow while you are eating it then on cooling it will come back to white so and that means that uh that compound is likely to be what to contain zinc ion so you can say zn2 plus is present because it's only one that has that peculiar reaction with it okay the second column sample d now plus acid it can be plus acl it depends on what the question asks you to do or it can be plus uh, h2so4 so See, because we are dissolving this sample D in acid now, is an indication that that sample D, that zinc salt, is insoluble in water. We have some uh, compound of zinc, like zinc oxide, like zinc carbonate, that are what? That are insoluble in what? In water. But if they are insoluble in water, they will be soluble in what? In acid. So immediately you dissolve it in acid, it dissolves. It dissolves. It depends on that. A sample is depends on that zinc salt. If that zinc salt contains, if it's zinc carbonate, if you dissolve it in acid, you know you are going to have a gas involved, which is a carbon four oxide. A gas will be involved if it is zinc carbonate. But in this case, now let's just assume that it's not a carbonate salt. Sample D dissolves in acidic solution to give a colorless solution, and that means that sample D is soluble in acidic medium, or, or let's say in acid solution so because we have dissolved sample D now which happens to be a compound that we suspect to contain zinc but then we cannot divide it into portions so that we can test with 
different reagents. We are testing the first portion with sodium hydroxide. I will drop in the description link uh, whereby a video whereby I explain how to uh, the, the, the dry test on zinc salt. Dry test on zinc salt. You can go, you can click on the link and watch the full video, the practical uh, test for zinc ion whereby i showed the the, the 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 video i displayed the practical test for that so we are using sodium hydroxide now to test for the presence of zinc ion now anytime we are going to in, in fast zinc i mean we are going to write zinc at our inference we must ensure that in our observation we supply white gelatinous please take note white gelatinous white gelatinous is very very important white gelatinous so we have white gelatinous precipitate and there are two ions that can give us white gelatinous precipitate the two ions that give us white gelatinous precipitate are aluminum ion which is al3 plus or zn2 plus those are the two ions that will give us a white gelatinous precipitate now in excess sodium hydroxide the gelatinous dissolves you can write gelatinous dissolves and you can write gelatinous soluble so at your inference you don't leave it blank you, you are still going to write al3 plus or zn2 plus is what is present that means in essence two of them will still be present we only use sodium hydroxide just to test for the presence of either aluminum ion or zinc ion we do not use sodium hydroxide to do what to confirm now we will now want to confirm one of the ions which is our main focus i mean zn2 plus so to the next portion we had aqueous ammonia that's column four we had aqueous, aqueous ammonia when we had aqueous ammonia we are still going to observe white gelatinous precipitate so when we observe white gelatinous precipitate in our inference it is this zn2 plus or al3 plus is present because the two ions that give gelatinous precipitate are those two ions so in ss now one of them will definitely dissolve in ss aqueous ammonia and the one that will dissolve in ss aqueous ammonia is zinc so in our observation uh we have white gelatinous dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia or white gelatinous soluble in excess in excess aqueous ammonia then we are going to say zinc ion is confirmed or you can say zinc ion is present like i said earlier i have released a videos on a chemical test to differentiate between aluminum ion and zinc ion thank you for watching do well to subscribe if you are yet to subscribe and make sure you share these videos with your friends if you have any question just drop in the comment box and be, be sure i'm going to attend to them thanks